Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I am Wendy Williams, along with my husband, John Williams. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. I am now a lord. Oh, that's So I got an early Christmas present because it came in the mail and you can't hide it. And right, right. In a big envelope. It came in a big, a giant envelope. And you're the one in charge of getting the mail. Yeah. So I, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I feel like I should be plugging this and I should have an affiliate link, but I don't. <laughs> right. Right. I don't, <laughs> but when you went to establish titles and I now have a certificate proclaiming me as a Lord, oh, I'm not calling you Lord. I'm just not, uh, I am. I can now officially change my credit cards to Lord <laughs> John Williams. Oh my God. I hope you do that. Yes. <laughs> that would be so. Yeah, so if you don't know, it's, you can, you can buy these. They're called souvenir titles, but you actually have souvenir rights to cool, whatever that means a one by one plot of land in scotland <laughs> right <laughs> and you get the deed to it and then because you're now a land owner in scotland you are a lord you are technically a lord so you now can refer to me as lord no no well not john Wayne. no not well you that means you get to be a lady oh well, now, now that changes things. We can be like Lord and Lady. That changes everything. Yes, it does. So you're going to call me Lord. My, my Lord. Aha. <laughs> Only if you call me my lady. My lady. All right, my lady. I feel like you should be kissing my hand when you do that. My lady. Well, I'm the Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, Lord. Yeah. Uh, I believe that I have created a monster, yeah. but. It was one of those fun novelty gifts. It's cool. I'll put it right over top of my diploma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no longer John Williams, oh, graduate of Appalachian State University. I am now Lord John Williams, <laughs> landowner <laughs> in Scotland. All right. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> but anyway, there you go. There you go. So, today, on the podcast, the Short-Term Rental Authority podcast, we are here to help make you the best operator ever. So let's get down to the real business. So this is Pricing 101. This is the very basics of pricing. So we are going to be talking about the pricing tool that we use, which we have mentioned before what type of pricing we use, the numbers that you need to know, and why you need to know them. So let's get started, shall we? This is something that we get asked a lot about <laughs> by just about everybody because pricing, I feel like, is one of the hardest things to do in the short-term rental space, don't you think? It is. It's it's one of the the harder things because there it's it's not an exact science. Yeah. A lot of it. Sometimes it's it's a little bit of an art to it. Mm -hmm. And then there are different strategies. Right. That go along with, well, how do I price? Right. right? And how well, do I Well let's talk about the basic strategy. So that's that's where we should start. It's just the basics. We should. Yeah. And I, I think that really starts with knowing your numbers. Okay. And when I say knowing your numbers, we talked about this before, but it bears repeating, you need to know what is your baseline? Like what does a night cost you? We call that your break even. That's what we call that. Well, it's not in quotes. It really is your break even. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm saying that's what we call it. Well, that's what you call it in yeah. business, I think. It's break your, even, it's your but break yeah. Break even number, right? Yeah, but it's your break even number, and it's basically if no one stayed there. If you had this house, you had this apartment, you had this whatever you got. Your yeah. Trade what is house. what does that thing cost you on a monthly basis to just have and operate? And that could be either whether you own it or whether you are leasing it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't it's, just, matter. it's just what are your total expenses if no one stayed there? So here's the things it doesn't include, because that's probably easier to say. It doesn't include cleaning. Right. It does not include cleaning. There's nobody stays there. So there's no cleaning. Right. It doesn't include supplies because right. nobody stayed there. So there's no supplies. But there are certain things you still have to pay. You still have to pay rent. You have to pay your mortgage. You have to pay 
electric your, your bill. utilities, yeah. which are technically a variable expense, but in this case, we treat them as a fixed expense because you don't turn off the power just because nobody's there, right? right? There's water, there's your insurance that you're paying, there's any software subscriptions that you have. Oh, that's, that's a really good point. You know, most of those charge you per unit or on an annual basis or something, mm -hmm. and you're paying that whether someone stays there or not, right? So um, that's that could be the the pricing software that you are using, which is what we use as Price Labs. There are others out there, right? Like there's Price Labs, Wheelhouse, and yeah, Wheelhouse, but, Beyond Pricing is another. Yeah. There are many others I've discovered. Yeah. But we use price labs. We find it to be fairly accurate in our area. Do you want to go down the road of tools? Well, yes, but just price labs. Okay. Well, what I hear, the normal thing I would tell somebody is that price labs is a tool. You should be using it. What it does is it does what's called dynamic pricing. So instead of doing something simple like, hey, my place is... $150 a night, every night, regardless of the night, or doing something like, okay, well, it's $100 during the week and it's $150 on the weekends. What this tool does is it actually prices out every single night. Differently. Differently. Just about. And it bases its pricing on, first of all, you give it a, a base price to work with. It may suggest one. And then what it does is either takes that base price and either lowers it or raises it based on a number of factors. One of the primary ones being demand. So your holiday is going to be more. Your Monday in the middle of July or not July, but January is going to be lower. Right. Using that because that's our low season. Because January sucks. In general, pricing days further away, meaning further out or more days closer in or less because it's tr what it's trying to do is get your days booked. Right. And that, that kind of goes back to the, what is your strategy of pricing? So in general, we need to then first discover what are expenses, mm -hmm. right? So we know how low we can go. Yeah, what does a day cost us? Really critical number to know. It is because if you think about it, it, you're basically taking what would be a wholesale purchase, mm -hmm. meaning a, a whole year's worth of availability. Yeah. And you're dividing it up into nights probably, and then selling nights. So it's, it's much like the same thing as you would go to, you know, a wholesale place like a Costco or a Sam's club or whatever, and you would buy whatever it is in bulk. It could be water. It could be candy. It could be bullet uh, paper. It could be ice cream. Ice cream. Huh? The the ice cream lady that yeah, comes around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and sells it out of the truck. She buys those at Costco. Yeah, but she buys them in bulk, so she gets right. a little bit of a discount. Mm -hmm. And then for the convenience of, she pulls up in the ice cream truck and it's cold, and you just go out to the end of the driveway. Well, the ice cream she paid twenty five cents for is now a dollar fifty. Right. Yeah, she just recently upped her prices. I noticed. No, oh, she did. Yes. Okay. Well, it used to be a dollar. Now it's a dollar fifty. Everything's inflated. Everything's inflated. Everything's now. inflated. But the idea is even you, the ice cream truck lady. Even the ice cream truck lady. Mm -hmm. That's sad. And that it is. But, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what were you talking about? I was saying buy it, buy it wholesale, right, right, sell right. it retail. Basically, and it's the same thing that we're doing with our pricing. So we need to know what is that wholesale cost, and it's your expenses. You got a formula for that? I have a rule of thumb for that. Oh, okay. All right. A rule of thumb. Yeah. So the, the actual answer is what are your real expenses and do you have a bookkeeper and do you keep track of that? Hmm. Cool. Right. So when I ask somebody, so a lot, a lot of times this comes up. So we'll, I'll have a coaching call. Somebody will book a coaching call with us, which you can do by the way, just DM us on social media, the word coaching and you'll get an automated response and you'll be in the system. But when I get one of those coaching calls, and a lot of times it's for pricing this time of year, yep. right? And the first thing I'll ask is, okay, well, what are your expenses? You know, if nobody stayed there, same, same idea. If nobody stayed there, 
what what does this place cost you a month? And somebody will tell me it's about eighteen hundred bucks, or it's two thousand dollars. And from the response, I immediately know that they don't know what their actual cost is because it's not it's not an even number. Right. It's not an even number. Right. Right. I'd rather someone tell me it's one thousand seven hundred and thirty two dollars and eighty six cents. Right. <laughs> now I know that you actually looked it up and know what your cost is. Right. Can I can I just stop you right there? Yeah. Because as a practical matter, I feel like it it's important to tell people that 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 is actually something that you should be tracking and and your bookkeeper will hopefully be doing that for you so big huge plug for go get a bookkeeper and and if you're just getting started there is a rule of thumb out there for that right so when you start a new unit is really what you're saying because yes. it, it could be Hey, yes. we've been doing this for a while. Right. If we go up new, you know, open new units in a wholly different market, we don't know either. Yes. Like there are tools out there that we've talked about, like AirDNA and things like that. And we've talked about why that's not as accurate as it could be. So for a rule of thumb, if you want to take a rule of thumb, take whatever market rent for that property would be as a long-term rental on a per month basis. So let's say, Hey, normally, you know, if we, we put this house up and it was a long-term rental it would the rent would be 1500 bucks and this this holds true whether you own it or not right just what's market rent and then take that market rent and multiply that number by 1.3 so if it was 1500 dollars, i would multiply one by 1.3 i would get 1950 dollars you already know this i do know this i've done this calculation a lot <laughs> And we say that because generally your fixed expenses are going to be about 30% of your rent. More than, yes. So that that's the number. That's the rule of thumb. Is it going to be exactly right? No, because it's a rule of thumb. But it's going to get really close. But it's going to get really close. After talking to people in all sorts of different markets, from everything from California to New York to D.C., to rural Alabama, to Louisiana, to Oklahoma, you name it, that that is generally true no. to, a, to a vast degree. And, the, and I will give you a caveat. It assumes that you're paying market rent. Mm -hmm. So if you are renting the place and you're overpaying for it, then that'll skew your number. So, if they, but if that is true market rent, then that's about right. Mm -hmm. And that's about what you can expect. Right. So market rent times 1.3. Yes. Will give you your fixed expenses. Rent plus fixed expenses. Roundabout. Within 100, 200 bucks. Right. And then what I do then, it would take that because I need to know how much the, that costs me a day. Well, the average number of days in a month is 30. So I would take that 1950 or whatever it comes out to be. Or use your real numbers, ideally, and divide that by 30. And now I know exactly how much does each day cost me. When this place is vacant, what does it cost me in dollars? Because remember, I can't sell today, yesterday. Right. Or tomorrow, I should say. You can't sell... Today, tomorrow. Today, tomorrow. Right. And yesterday's gone. And yesterday's so gone. So if it doesn't sell... Yesterday's gone. Is that a song? Yeah. It, yeah, it must be an 80s song. It is. <laughs> okay. If I'm ever in a trivia thing and there's a music category, Wendy's on my team. Yeah. I, I got to think about who sings it, though. Yeah. I answer history questions. She answers... Pop. Pop. Yes. Pop trivia. Pop trivia. Yes. But anyway, I'm going to take those, the expenses of the month divided by 30, and that tells me what a day costs me. Okay. So rent times 1.3 divided by 30. Yes. And that tells me truly what a day costs me. <clears throat> Now that's not the true cost though, because that assumes a hundred percent occupancy. occupancy. I, I was wondering where you were going with that. Right. So we've left out an expense and that expense that we have left out is vacancy, vacancy. because you're going to have vacancy. You just are even on a long-term rental. If you don't account for vacancy, good luck. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> it's a, it's an expense. Right. So what we tend to do is 
we shoot for 80% occupancy. So we would take that number and instead of dividing it by 30, which is 100% of a month, let's divide it by 80% of a month. And that's now 24 days out of 30 is 80% of it. Mm -hmm. So that raises the, what each night costs you sure. a little bit because now you're accounting for vacancy, a little bit of vacancy. Right. Right. So now it's rent times 1.3 divided by 24. Yes. Right. And now, okay, now I've accounted for all of my real expenses plus, well, a very vacancy. real expense, which is vacancy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I think a lot of people miss that. Yeah. And you, and you may need to adjust that for your market. Mm -hmm. You know, if 60% is your average over a year, mm -hmm. right? Then, okay, use 60. Mm -hmm. Use 60% of a month. But that tells you what that night costs you. Mm -hmm. That's what you're projecting at least, right? And so that's important because the pricing tool is very good at getting you the, the, the higher end days. Like if it's Christmas, it's going to raise the price. If there's an event in your town, it's going to notice that there's demand and it's going to raise the price. But what it doesn't know is what your costs are. It doesn't know how low you can go. It doesn't go. know how low you can go and you have to tell it that. Unless you tell it. And if you don't know your numbers, you can't tell it the appropriate thing. Right. Right. And that's why it's important for you to know that. Yes. So now you know, okay, here's how low I can go. And now that I know how low I can go, and then I realize that I can't sell today, tomorrow. tomorrow, that means that today should always be at my minimum. Yes. So if today is vacant, it should be at whatever I calculate at my minimum or perhaps even lower. Or per, I was going to say, cause I noticed sometimes it is lower. Yeah. Sometimes I'll put it lower because I would, cause if I know that a day costs me, for example, 50 bucks. Like I did the calculations, I figured out, okay, a day cost me $50. I would rather sell it for 25 than lose 50. Cause if I sell it for 25, I only lose 25. Yeah. I mean, something's better than nothing. So it's kind of like, would you rather lose $25 or $50? Right. Cause that's what it costs you. Right. Right. If it's this vacant. Right. But at least in the tool, I can set that minimum. Cause I know I can always do that. I know I'm always willing to break even. I, I like the analogy of bananas on the shelf. Oh, this is a good analogy. Do this. So but when you're selling fruit, but I'm using bananas, they, they don't last forever. Right. They have a shelf life. Right. And bananas, they sit out, they get brown and eventually nobody wants to buy them and then you throw them out. So well, if you can't, if you don't. Then you can use them for smoothies. Oh my God. You're going to sell <laughs> rotten bananas. for They go rotten eventually. Well, that's true. Right. <laughs> The point is that the grocery store will almost give you the bananas yeah. that are bad because they're just going to throw them in the trash anyway. Right. Right. So the price gets lower and lower the riper they are. Right. And so it is with your, your nightly rate as well. Today is really right. And it goes rotten tomorrow. Right. Right. It's going to go rotten tomorrow. So sell it for something. Yes. Something's better than nothing. And if you can sell it with a bunch of other days that you actually can reap some profit on sure, right right but the the goal is really for our first goal is always don't lose money the second goal is okay if i gotta lose something don't lose all of it right and then the third goal is okay now let's go make our profit elsewhere right right so today is going to be at cost at least say at, at least. least at cost but tomorrow is going to be maybe a little bit more Right. And then the next day is going to be a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. And the day after that's going to be a little bit more than that. So it's incrementally. Right. And if you look a month ahead, then okay, now those prices are way up, mm -hmm. right? Because they're a month in advance. Right. So that, that's the way it generally works. But what happens is people are afraid to go too low because mm -hmm. they're afraid. They're afraid if I set my place for $25, then who's going to stay there? Yeah. Somebody that you don't want. <laughs> right. And I, and I get the sentiment, but there are ways to get around that. that I won't get into that right now where you can actually use that $25 day to get a week or a two week long booking that you wouldn't have necessarily gotten otherwise because you were afraid to go too low, mm -hmm. right? On a particular day. Right. So that. It, that's why I say there's, there's a bit of science to it. There's a bit of an art to it, but 
if you want to take something away from that and you're using a pricing tool, go look at the calendar for one of your listings. And even if today is booked, it should tell you what did it calculate for today as a daily rate? So if today was vacant, what, what number is it showing you? And it ought to be at your cost. And if it's not or lower or lower, but the tool is only going to go to the minimum, mm -hmm. which we gave it as cost, mm -hmm. right? So it should be at cost. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, then the tool's not set up properly. And you might want to jump on a coaching call so I can help you with that and get, get your tool optimized. So it's actually working for you and not against you. Because if it, in those cases, it's actually working against you on the low end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we can definitely help you out with that. Let me, let me rephrase that. John can help you out with that. I can help you out to a certain extent, but John would love to talk to you about your pricing. I would. I like that, talking about that. That, that is your specialty. You, you were talking to a student just the other day and not 15 minutes after you got off the coaching call, she got a oh, seven. Yeah, she got a seven. She got a seven night. Yeah. She got a seven night booking after y'all made those changes. So hop on a coach call with us, but we would love to, to help you out with, with that pricing and that pricing tool and getting that tool set up and making sure that first of all, you're using a pricing tool and you know why you're using a pricing tool and you know how to use it. It's an expert tool that you need to learn how to use expertly as our mentor, Jay Massey always told us. And we can teach you how to do that. So we would, we would love to, to help you out, to help you out with that. So do we cover the three things? We did indeed. Okay. Yeah. Well, you excellent. did a great job. Okay. My Lord. My Lord. <laughs> My lady. <laughs> yeah. Don't get used I'm, I'm going to be an affiliate link for that. <laughs> titles and we're going right. to put it in the YouTube. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I like it. YouTube description. Look for it. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> so we hope you found some value in today's podcast. And if you did, go like and subscribe and you will get notified of all the fabulous podcasts that we have available so far and the ones that are coming up in the future. And I have a feeling that 2023 is going to be spectacular. So we'll see you then. On to the next. On to the next.